and welcome to another episode of Fishing Western Australia. We've got a great show for you today. And hopefully, we're gonna get some queenies on this great big island. Let's see what else is coming up. Today, we've got something for everyone, including a fly fishing lesson off the beach with Marshy, some amazing Kimberley queenfish action, and a name that fish competition where you can win. But first, let's find an easy way to catch flathead at East Fremantle. Today, what I want to show you is how easy it is to go flathead fishing here in the Swan River in Perth. It's a fantastic thing to do because you can do it, the kids can do it, the wife, the husband, everyone in the family can do this. It's cheap and it's simple. All you need is a rod and reel. You don't even need a rod and reel, even a hand line will do, but if you go to a tackle store and pick up a $20 rod and reel with two four kilo line, that's all you need to get started. We don't even need bait. In fact, we're going to use these little rubber prawns called prawn stars. You've seen them on the show before. Little tail flicks around like that, and it's so simple to use. I'm going to show you soon how you can use this prawn to catch fish. Not much more is required except a wet rag, and you'll see why once we catch a fish. And so we can see the fish, a pair of polarizing sunglasses so we can see through the water. Even a cheap pair will do, but you want to be able to get through that glare in the afternoon sun. Now the most important thing about flathead fishing before we get started is picking the right time to fish. And it might be in the morning, or it might be in the afternoon, or it might be at midday. The reason is, it's all tidal. Flathead are a predatory fish. They wait and they ambush fish from underneath, so they like a bit of water movement. By far and away, the best time to catch them is halfway between the low running up to the high tide. So start fishing about halfway on what we call the run-up, right to the high tide, and you're guaranteed of some flathead action in summer at East Fremantle, so let's get started. What you're looking for is some weed on the bottom and a nice steep drop off like you see in front of me now. Cast your lure over the edge and work it back over the top of the sand where Flathead are going to be waiting to ambush their prey. Flathead live on the bottom, so let the lure sink and let it sit for a few seconds. Your retrieve should be slow with little twitches up and down to keep the lure out of any weed. Flathead will pick up a prawn or fly that's stationary. Flathead's just followed my prawn right in close. And he's looking at it, a twitch, and he's picked it up. There you go, look at that. Oh, that's a good fish too. Now, that's a good example of why you need to work your lure, oh, he's surging off, right close back into the shoreline. Because sometimes these flathead will actually come in very close. Oh, he's got a bit of a fight in him too. Woohoo! They'll come in very close, right up to your feet and think about it. So I let the prawn just settle. And as soon as he saw it twitch again, that is when it decided he wants a bit of that. So I'll just land him and remember, flathead have some nasty spikes. So you've got to be careful. And that's where the rag comes in handy. So they've got sharp teeth, but they've got some worse bits than that. Now I'm just going to pick him up on the side of the mouth and get that lure out. I'll show you why you've got to be very careful. Have a look at that. On those gill rakers, very sharp spikes, and there's one up there as well. And they've got like a bacteria on them, and I'll tell you what, you get that on you, it's going to hurt. But if you ever do, just rub your hand on the belly, get a little bit of the slime, and rub it on any affected areas, because under there, that slime seems to be a bit of an antidote, and I've done that myself when I've been a bit careless, but I'm going to put it back in the water, because they're not overly durable. Let it go. After you land a fish, make sure that any weed on the lure is removed or nothing will eat it. The tide was an hour past the low, and the water was moving along nicely. This current is the sign for the flathead that it's time to start feeding. Suddenly, the sandbar was alive with fish following my lure. Now just twitch that rod tip, very gent- oh look at that. I didn't even see that one come in. They're so well camouflaged, and I've grabbed this one right near the shore, and I don't think it knows it's hooked yet. Well, in a minute, oh yeah, now it does. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! He's coming out of the water. He followed that right in. And I'll land him before he works out what's going on. We've got ourselves a green flathead here. He didn't even know he was hooked. That's all right, he'll come right out, and we're ready to release him, here we go. 
Won't have any problems swimming off, I imagine, with that sort of activity. Now I've got my rag over his eyes. I'll remove it. Let him go. He won't trust me again. There's no doubt that the tide is all important because now the fish were everywhere. He's thinking, hmm, I can't recall prawns being that upset before. And I'm not going to bring him in until he's had a good thrash about. Quite a dark fish too, as you can see. Okay, let's calm it down a little bit. Safe to land, and this is a very, very good demonstration here of why these lures are so effective at getting flathead. The prawn star has a treble hook that clips into the body, but it can be easily pulled out when a fish strikes. This gives you a better chance of a solid hookup on a fish like a flathead that sucks baits in from the side. Most of my hookups have been in the bottom jaw, and very few are able to escape before I actually want them to. Most of the larger fish are breeding females, so I always like to return them carefully. We'll pop them straight back, eh? There you go, you ready? You're back in the water, there you go. Quite sedate that time, wonderful. 